Okay, so here's the scenario. You're a Nintendo kid in the late 80s and you love Mario. You played the original Super Mario Brothers on Nintendo, and maybe the second one too, which wasn't even originally a Mario game. Then you go to the theater to see this wizard movie. You get an hour and 10 minutes of Fred Savage, this kid mumbling about California. California. And then, oh my god, Super Mario Brothers 3 is revealed. The first Super Mario Brothers was a classic, but this game had a lot more going on. All these different power-ups, a significant visual upgrade, and gameplay that holds up so well that it's still some people's favorite game they've ever played. The game was just such a complete package at the time. Not only did you have the actual platforming levels, you had the overworld map, which was a game in itself. You had to try to figure out how to progress and could pick up various items that would help you. The levels you would beat were directly related to the map and would allow you to work your way across it. This would create a lot of fun decisions where you could skip certain stages by either using a certain item or just going a different route. It was a long game too, so much that you had warp whistles you could use to move ahead, and when the game was re-released in the All-Stars pack it had a save function added in. Let's talk about how this game played though, and specifically controlling Mario. It feels a lot different than Mario 1, and I would argue you feel much more in control. I'm sure there's purists out there who swear by the first game, but later games definitely felt more in line with Mario 3, to the point where gamers have to adjust when going back to Mario 1 after it's been a while. Anyways, regardless of how you compare the two games, most people really like the way Mario 3 feels. For obvious reasons, handling well in a platforming game goes a long way. You have to do a lot of precise running, jumping, ducking, and landing in this game. It can really ruin the experience if you feel like the controls are causing you to fail, and on the flip side, extremely satisfying when you feel like you are in control, and it's just a matter of pulling off what you are trying to do. I mean, the supreme platforming controls of Mario have always been what allowed for such intricate and creative level design, regardless of which game. I mean, that's what made Super Mario Maker such a big hit. The controls in Mario are so solid and iconic that it could be opened up for everybody to try their hand at making creative challenges. The level design in Mario 3 isn't as off the wall as what you'll find in Mario Maker, but it is extremely solid and a lot of people's favorite Mario game for a reason. It's not just the standard running and jumping at play in this game though. The power-ups that you can get really open things up. Of course, the classic Fire Mario returns and is as fun as ever, but I think the Raccoon and Tanuki power-ups are the most iconic in this game. And they're pretty dang useful too. They give you a tail which allows you to fly in the air for brief periods of time, but even more useful than that, I think, is the ability to float. This makes it so you have so much control over your jumps as you can go even farther and slowly decide where you want to land. I always save these power-ups for the stages that require a lot of jumping. The frog suit is also pretty fun to use. Its main purpose is for swimming and I find it extremely useful for those levels. I'm a little rusty at this game and so you're about to see a quick fail here and yup, already lost it. But that leaves us with the hammer suit. Okay, so you occasionally run into the hammer bros on the map screen and it's the type of showdown that you're either good at or you're not. Well, when I first started playing this game, I was not so good at dealing with these guys and would just burn through life after life trying to take them down instead of just trying again later. It made me want to put an actual hammer through the TV. So when I finally got the hammer suit and could use their annoying attack against other enemies, it was oh so satisfying. There's also this shoe you can find an enemy hopping around in, and if you kill the enemy inside the shoe, then you can get to go inside the shoe and hop around in it. You have great mobility in this thing, and it's a lot of fun to tear through a stage in it. There's also some really fun abilities that Mario has even when he's not equipped with any of the power-ups. He can pick up shells and throw them at enemies and blocks, which introduces an additional level of strategy as you can carry shells with you through platforming sections in order to use it further into the stage. 
But to me, the most fun thing Mario can now do is sliding down hills, wiping out all the enemies along the way. So satisfying. It's one of those games you can just play anytime and think, yeah, this was a good decision. You may have noticed that I've been switching back and forth between the regular and all-stars versions of the game. And that leads me to this week's question. Which version of this game do you prefer? I think I prefer the all-stars version myself, but I know there's plenty of people who prefer the original. Okay, so let everybody know your preference in the comments, and I will see ya in the next video.